One of the most common questions that I get asked all the time, especially when someone is buying an Amiga, is should I go for the Speedmaster or should I go for the Seamaster? And it's time to find out. When you are looking at Amiga, the two watches that stand out to you above all else are, of course, the Speedmaster sitting to my left and the Seamaster. And the reason that they stand out to you as well, the Seamaster is in James Bond and the Speedmaster went to the moon. They're pretty iconic watches in the industry and that is the two that people are drawn to. The Constellation is also quite nice, but today let's just talk about the Speedmaster and the Seamaster. Welcome back to Time in the Wrist at Chisholm Hunter. My name is Harrison, as always, and today we're going to be doing a comparison video versus versus the Amiga Seamaster and the Amiga Speedmaster. Now, they're very, very different watches and they're both great for different things. So a lot of this will depend on your personal preference. I've decided on one, you might be able to tell, but I'm gonna give an honest opinion on both and what I think would suit you. Let's begin with the case dimensions. So the Amiga Speedmaster, the moon watch in my right hand, this is the Hesalite version, comes in at 42 and so does the Seamaster. But the Seamaster wears a little bit bigger and that's partly due to the thickness. Now the thickness is also an interesting one because the Speedmaster, the moon watch has domed Hesalite glass, which adds a lot to the thickness, but the watch as a whole is actually thinner. So although you might think it comes in thicker, it doesn't sit that high, if that makes any sense. But let's dig into the stats. The thickness of the Amiga Moon Watch, the Speedmaster in my hand, is 14 millimeters, according to our digital calipers. But remember, this is massively increased. The thickness is massively increased because of that domed Hesalite crystal. So depending on how you look at it, this is a thinner watch than the Seamaster, but it looks bigger because of the domed Hesalite crystal. So moving on to the Seamaster, it comes in at, according to our digital, digital calipers <laughs> at 13.7 millimeters, but it wears bigger. It wears thicker, even though technically speaking, the Speedmaster is. Moving on to the weight of both of these models, the Amiga Speedmaster, the Moon Watch, comes in at 92 grams, according to our, our scales that we have here. The Amiga Seamaster, however, comes in at 113 grams. So there's almost a 20 gram difference there. And I think a lot of that is because there's more metal on the Seamaster. Remember that the Seamaster goes to 300 meters underwater, so it needs to withstand that pressure. Then it also has sapphire crystal glass. It has a helium escape valve. There's lots of stuff on that watch that this watch doesn't have. And I think that's where that weight difference comes in. With that said, it is quite nice to have a lighter watch on the wrist, but personally, I prefer the more bulky nature of the Seamaster. Whoa, 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 we actually have a really exciting announcement. We need to pause the video. We are giving you the chance to win one of three Tissot goodie bags, which are all cycling orientated, hence why I'm dressed like this. All you need to do is subscribe to the channel and comment with your favorite Tissot model. Three, two, one. Both of these models come in stainless steel. Now, of course, you guys will know that stainless steel is my probably favorite metal out of everything. It remains scratch resistant and light without being overly light and overly scratch resistant, if that makes any sense. If you were to go for gold, it would scratch a lot easier. Now, everyone likes to flash, everyone likes to wear gold, but it would scratch a lot easier. In my lifestyle, that just doesn't work. Then you go the other way, the more durable way, and you get titanium. Titanium itself is a light, dark metal. I don't like how light titanium is personally. I prefer heavier watches. And I also prefer watches, uh, steel watches that show and reflect the light. So I prefer that brighter feel. Long story short, go with stainless steel. The case designs on both of these models are of course very different. One is of course a chronograph and the other one is a diving watch. So this can go to 300 meters underwater, hence the thickness helps the bulkier nature. They both have polished and a combination of polished and brushed metal and the lugs on the Seamaster are that little bit closer together. Whereas the Speedmaster looks like it's spreading out that little bit more wraps around like sort of outwards that little bit more. And I suppose that's partially due to the Hesalite crystal. 
Then you get to the pushers on the Speedmaster, which are obviously to the right. So it has a pusher at the top, a manual winding crown, and then another pusher. And on the Seamaster, you have the helium escape valve over to the left and the crown guards and the crown to the right. My personal preference here is the simplicity of reading the time. So I would go with the Seamaster. The straps on both of these models are very, very different. One is nylon and one is rubber. And the nylon strap, the clasp, is a deployant clasp. And technically speaking, I would say that the nylon is easier to put on, whereas the rubber is a little bit more sporty and is, of course, a pin buckle. So it depends what you want to go for. They're both very different. It's a bit like my haircut. I'm embracing the curls now, but, you know, they do the same thing. Hair does the same thing. It's just how you style it. Moving straight on to the bezel, which can be viewed directly at Chisholm Hunter, where we're actually authorized retailers for Amiga watches. Make sure you click the link below if you want either of these bad boys. And this is now time for the tradition around here at Chisholm Hunter, which is of course the wrist check. What is on your wrist at the moment? Let me know in the comments. I love reading through the weird and wonderful watches that you guys have in your collections. So let me know in the comments. As I was saying, let's move on to the bezel. So on the Amiga Seamaster 300 meters, you have a fully ceramic bezel that is unidirectional. Directional, so it only goes one way. It is in black and it has white numerals that are really, really prominent against that black. It also has a, a dot of loom at the top because it's a fully functional dive watch. You know, sometimes I actually surprise myself with how fast I can speak. You can probably tell I've had far too much coffee today. The Speedmaster has an anodized aluminium bezel ring, which is a lot thinner than the bezel of the Seamaster that we have to the left of us just here and it comes in black, or it's almost like kind of a metallic-y matte black, and the numerals are actually in the silver, so they fit the theme of the case. They're actually very easy to read for how small they are, so kudos to Amiga for making it that easy. Sometimes they can get lost in tachymetric scales, but it's still very easy to read. Now, because the bezel is that little bit thinner, or actually a lot thinner than the Seamaster that we have over to the left, it has more dial real estate, and that allows there to be more complications on the dial, which we'll dive into in a minute, but that's why they've technically done that. The glass on the Amiga Seamaster is sapphire crystal glass with anti-reflective coating on both sides, but the downside to that, or the negative to that, there's not many, but the negative to that is, technically speaking, the AR coating might scratch that a little bit easier. Now, I have had my Seamaster, my white Seamaster, for two years, and I've never scratched the AR coating, so I think that you should be okay, but just bear that in mind just in case. Then we get to the Speedmaster, where the Hesalite crystal is actually domed. Now, the good thing about Hesalite crystal is it will never shatter. So sapphire crystal glass can shatter, but Hesalite will never shatter. And when they were in the spaceships, when they took this watch up to space, that's actually what they used. Because the last thing that they wanted is something shattering and piercing a hole in the suit. The Hesalite, on the other hand, will just kind of pop out. It won't have any sharp edges. So there's positives and negatives to both of these, but if you want to remain true to history, technically you should be going for the Amiga Speedmaster with the Hesalite crystal. So it's really your personal preference here. I mean, listen, guys, I've got this on my wrist. You guys know me at this point, so you know what I go with, but it's just to give you a bit of direction. I do think that the Speedmaster is that little bit more dressy to me, whereas the Seamaster is a little bit more sporty. The Seamaster is, of course, water resistant to 300 meters, whereas the Speedmaster is resistant to 50 meters. Now, you might be saying, oh, well, there's an obvious winner here, but when have you ever dived to 300 meters? From personal experience, I can tell you that I've never been that deep. I've actually not even been in the water with my watch apart from the shower. So, you know, it's, there's a give and take there. Sometimes it's a bit overkill and you don't actually need the specs that you buy. It's just cool to get them though. It's cool to have the watch that can do that. But if you don't need it, then you could go with the Speedmaster. And I know what you guys are thinking. The Amiga Seamaster can go a lot deeper than this can. But my question to you is, can the Amiga Seamaster go to 384,400 kilometers into the sky? By the way, that is to the moon. And the answer is, no it can't. Moving on to the dials of both of these models. Both of them are very, very different. One is more classical, whereas one has a modern twist. The Amiga Seamaster in my right hand has big, bold hands and also indices. Um, and that's because it's a diving watch. Now these are filled with super luminova. It also has a, a wave motif running through it. I love that texture. I love that pattern. You guys know I do. The data clock, the data clock? <laughs> The date window is at six o'clock and that is brilliant to me because it's symmetrical. The dial on this one is black, 
which is great. Again, the tip of the second hand is red and the hands are actually skeletonized. I'm a big fan of skeletonized hands. I know that some people aren't, but I am. The Amiga Speedmaster is a lot more classical in its shape and in its looks. The bezel is obviously thinner, which gives it more dial real estate. So the hands and the indices are a little bit bigger. They're quite slim though. They're quite thin and elegant. It also fits in three subdials, and I will go over the technical specifications when we go over the movement. The hands and the indices have Super Luminova uh, in them, and we'll compare the Super Luminova of the Seamaster and this in just a second. The dial on this is kind of a matte black dial, and it also has two layers of depth. It almost seems to slope down towards the side, which is a really nice touch. At the 12 o'clock mark, it has two dots beside that little line kind of a watch nerdy feature, but I really like it. Both of these models have pretty incredible looms. I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with both, but the key difference here is that the Seamaster has that dot of loom on the bezel and also the loom is blue and also green. So it has the combination of both. The Speedmaster is a lot slimmer and actually a little bit brighter, if you ask me. Flipping both of these models round before we get onto that beautiful movement of both of these models, the Amiga Seamaster has an open case back, which is pretty beautiful because you can see in to that beautiful movement. Whereas the Speedmaster, staying true to its roots, has a closed case back. It still has a beautiful movement, but it just has a closed case back with engravings on the case back. So the first watch on the moon and qualified by NASA, etc. It's quite cool. Qualified by NASA. Not every day you can say that. The movement in the Amiga Seamaster is the Amiga Caliber 8800. It's a self-winding mechanical movement with a coaxial escapement. It's certified by Master Chronometer, approved by Metas, and resistant to magnetic fields reaching 15,000 gauss. It has a free sprung balance with a silicon balance spring, an automatic winding in both directions. It has a rosium plated finish with Geneva waves in arabesque. The power reserve of this bad boy is 55 hours. Whereas the movement on the Amiga Speedmaster is the Amiga Caliber 3861, a manual winding movement, not automatic, with a co-actual escapement. It's certified by Master Chronometer, approved by Metas, and resistant to magnetic fields reaching 15,000 gauss. It has a free sprung balance with silicon balance spring. It has a rhodium plated finish, bridges with straight Geneva waves. It has a power reserve of 50 hours. The complications at the front, so it has a 60 second counter, a 12 hour counter, and also a 30 minute counter. The Amiga Speedmaster in my left hand is very much a nod to the past, whereas the Amiga Seamaster in my right is very much a nod to the future. Both are extremely different watches, and actually the Speedmaster, you can get modern incarnations that aren't as similar to the original with sapphire crystal glass, etc. So you can kind of mix and match, but let's get to the price. The Seamaster in my right hand comes in at £4,550, whereas the Speedmaster comes in at 5420 so there is quite a notable difference there, but I suppose you're getting additional complications on the Amiga Speedmaster. So this is the way that I would see it. If you want a more elegant, dressy watch with those complications and you're maybe not as afraid to wear it on special occasions, I would go with the Speedmaster. Where if you want more of an everyday, durable, sporty wearer, I would go with the Seamaster. Both are incredible watches. Both are COS and Meta certified. They have brilliant movements. One is a nod to the heritage and one's a nod to the future. Which one you go for is up to you. I went for the Seamaster. I really hope that helped clarify your decision if you were if you were sort of struggling. I do get that question a lot, especially on the Chisholm Hunter Watches Instagram, where we post spur of the moment stuff. Drew and I actually run that Instagram. It's a personal Instagram to us. If you follow us there, it'd be much appreciated. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Time in the Wrist at Chisholm Hunter. My name's Harrison. As always, if you want to join the Chisholm Hunter Watch community, make sure you hit this little, little bubble thing right here. And I will see you after I get back from Indonesia. See you soon.